So, are you wondering which shoulder rest you should buy as a new violin player? The violin shoulder rest is this contraption here, which sits underneath the chin rest on top of the shoulder, like this. If your shoulder rest is in the correct position, you should be able to look over the end of your violin, have your shoulders relaxed. So by relaxed, I mean back and down like that. So we're not hunching them up like that to push up the violin so that it stays in place, but we're keeping our shoulder blades back and down and simultaneously having our chin on the chin rest and being able to hold our violin without any arms and keeping the shoulders relaxed. Actually, now I'm doing this, I'm realizing that my shoulder rest is not in the right position. But fortunately, it doesn't matter because I've actually got a brand new one here, which I'm going to open today on camera. Um, the brand I use is Bon Musica. Uh, you can't see the sticker there, but I will put a link to their website below and you can see where to get these from. Um, so how do you choose a shoulder rest for the violin? There's so many choices and you can spend anything from about, you know, 10 euros or even less, um, up to a hundred or more. Um, now the rationale for choosing a shoulder rest normally is to do with whether the shoulder rest fits the uh, space between your chin and your shoulder and they all come in different sort of shapes and sizes. Uh, a lot of them I personally find are a little bit on the low side for me so I choose the Bon Musica shoulder rest because it has the greatest potential for creating the distance between the neck sorry, the chin and the shoulder, fulfilling that distance, because you can adjust the feet this way so that they go higher. And when you adjust them to their full capacity, they go pretty high. And not only can you adjust the, the height of the feet, but you can also adjust the shape of the shoulder. So you can make it into the line that suits your shoulder. So you don't have to have the same uh, type of uh, shoulders as me to use this this shoulder rest. If you've got, I've got quite narrow kind of bony shoulders. If you've got broader shoulders with a wider top, you can actually flatten that part there so that it sits nicely on top of that. So it's great. Say if you're a really big, broad, strong man and you think this looks a bit small, you know you can adjust it so that it fits you. Now, I would personally say 90% of the shoulder rests that are on the market would give me uh, problems with my shoulders and have done in the past. So I've really paid particular attention to this issue over the years. Uh, how can you tell if you are using an ill-fitting shoulder rest? You will probably have... So we're going back to the old shoulder rest here, the one that I'm gonna replace. The reason I'm replacing this I've had mine for quite a long time now and one of the bits of plastic is coming off the feet there and I have a spare backup so I'm going to use the spare backup and I'm going to put this one in my drawer as my spare now um, because if the plastic comes off the feet then it can scratch the violin which we don't want. So going back, you want the violin with your shoulders relaxed and your shoulder blades down your back to be able to sit on the shoulder with no hands and it to be parallel to the floor. And by parallel to the floor, it means not sticking up that way and not sticking down that way. If it's sticking up that direction, then you've probably got the height setting on your shoulder rest is too low for you, so you need to expand it to make it greater. And if it's pointing upwards like that, then you need to use a lower setting. Now, if you get to the point on your particular brand of shoulder rest that you can't go any further in terms of lowering it or raising the distance between the uh, 
top and the bottom of the, the shoulder rest. You, excuse me. Um, you will have to get different shoulder rests. Now, there are certain brands you can get. Some are better suited for smaller distances between necks and shoulders. So I've had students who've struggled to find one that's comfortable for them because that distance is smaller. And some of the brands that suit a really small distance, um, there's one which is a blow-up shoulder rest, which is kind of like a cushion. And that one is, uh, I'll link these below by the way, and I'll categorize them so that you can find where to get them from. Um, so that one's pretty good. There are also sort of stick-on grippy ones, which I'm not such a big fan of, but they, they, they do do the job. But the, as far as I'm aware, the blow-up one is the best uh, option. Now there are some mid-range ones, which are uh, the, I prefer the Kuhn Solo, and there are also a lot of cheaper uh, sort of versions of these shoulder rests around as well. So if you, if you kind of Google the names of them and then put copy or something like that, or style, you might find um, a more affordable version of the one that you're looking for. So if you think that the, for example, the Kuhn Solo, which might be, you know, a mid-range, mid to expensive price, uh, something like 50 euros, I can't remember, but again, I'll link it below. Um, depending when, when you buy it and where, of course. Uh, you can also get imitation ones, which are quite similar for about 15 euros. The quality is lower, the comfort level is lower, and I would not recommend that you use it as a long-term solution. You should only buy a cheap shoulder rest when you are a beginner and you just want to see whether the violin is for you. Now, if you commit to it, so say if you've been with it for six months to a year, you should not then continue to use a poor quality shoulder rest and you should be very mindful of your posture because over time you can cause damage to your own skeletal structure, which I actually have done, um, through not taking care of your posture. So my problem was I was always pushing my right shoulder up and forward to bow and I played in a lot of loud bands so you often have to kind of over bow a little bit in order to compete with the, the drum kit in the PA system. So over time, my shoulder moved forwards. And now in order to uh, take care of that in the long run, I have to keep doing uh, physio exercises. So with the shoulder rest side, I also had some problems here because my shoulder rest was always too low for me. So for years, I used the Wolf, which is just about big enough. Um, the Wolf brand is one of the, the larger sizes, and I will put that, again, link the, the, to their website below so you can have a look. Um, but it, it just didn't quite sit right on me, and as a result, I was always slightly forward, and I also used to stoop forward when I play, which is a really bad idea. And what I have learned over the years through the practice of yoga, which is highly, highly important to maintaining your ability to play an instrument like the violin in the long run, you really should pay attention to your posture, whether it's through yoga or any other uh, form of body awareness. There's lots of different ways you can do this. Um, you should be very aware of your posture all the time so that you don't get chronic problems because if you're playing an instrument like the violin for, you know, four to six hours a day, as I have done over the years, uh, you will end up with similar problems and they do take a long time to fix and I had to actually stop playing for a year in order to fix my, my, my right arm. However, with this side, I found that I got a lot of back of my neck pain and upper back pain from not having the correct shoulder rest. So if I'm practicing a lot, I would always, at the end of the day, feel kind of hunched up and awful. Whereas now, I don't have that problem, provided I'm conscious of my posture because of the Bon Musica. So let's have a look at the new Bon Musica shoulder rest I have, and I'll set it up with you so you can see how to unpack a Bon Musica shoulder rest and set it up from the point of receiving it in the post, which I'm sure that's how 90% of these things are sold these days. It's very unfortunate, but it is the case that everything shifting to online. 
Um, but God bless the violin shops and may they stay alive. So if you can go to your local violin shop to buy this, please do. So I've just pulled it out the box. Um, it is looking something like this. Okay. So it's on a much lower setting as to where I had my old Bond Musica. So if you have a look at these, there is a slight height difference there. Can you see the feet are higher up? I tried to level those out. How do I do this? All I have to do here is to raise the feet is unscrew these. So I'm turning it anti-clockwise from my perspective, both of them anti-clockwise and raise it up to its highest setting, which is where I like it. And sometimes I even attach things to the bottom of this so that I can make it even higher. Um, but I am a fairly extreme case. So now I'm going to affix my Bon Musica shoulder rest to the bottom of my violin here. So how do I do that? First of all, I need to check whether the feet are in the right place or I need to adjust the, the feet anymore. So I'm going to hook it on. Holding the shoulder rest in my right hand and the violin in my left, I'm basically going to aim for just above the silver chin rest holder. So you should have one of these. If not, use the chin rest as your guide. So it should be on the other side of the chin rest, just above it there. So you can see the chin rest holder. I'm aiming for about a centimetre or two above that. And then I'm going to pull the other side and clip it on to the opposite side, roughly in the same place, just below the widest part of the violin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scooch the feet up slightly. And by scooch, I mean push, gently push a little bit at a time to push up the shoulder rest so that it goes slightly further up the violin and is therefore more secure. Now, if your feet of your shoulder rest are too wide here, then you might need to push them in slightly on the bottom musica. Uh, likewise, if they're not wide enough, you need to pull them out slightly, but normally most violins are roughly the same width, so it shouldn't be anything major. It should fit all full sizes. I think also three quarters um, on this one. Check when you buy it. No, this is a full size. So it's for a violin of 205 millimetres in width. All right, so now I'm gonna check whether it fits me on my shoulder. So I'm gonna pop it on my shoulder and I'm gonna look over the end of the violin. And then I'm gonna check in the camera, or you can do this in the mirror. Is my violin as parallel to the floor as it could be? I personally feel it is Point drooping downwards slightly. So I'm looking at this line here, it's drooping slightly downwards. So I need to raise the height if possible, or if not, scooch the feet slightly lower so they become further towards the bottom of the violin without it falling off. And that also increases the height. So if you push it up the violin, it becomes lower. Now, I think I'm pointing slightly upwards. Can you see that? So you can actually use the towel rail for a bit of a uh, behind me for a little bit of perspective here. And you can see there that I'm not perfectly parallel. So I need to kind of scooch the feet back down again. Up the violin. So they're going that way this time and see how it looks then. That feels pretty good. I think I've got it right. Now, I'm also going to check whether this part of the shoulder rest needs reshaping. So this bit is the bit that you can mould to suit your shoulder. So let's have a look at how it sits on my shoulder. Could it be better? I think so, yeah. Can you see there? There's a little bit of height between, well, there's a gap between my shoulder and the shoulder rest. So I'm actually going to make the angle here slightly more acute so that it feels a bit more secure there on my shoulder. Let's try that. Ah, so now I have another problem. I've made it too acute so it doesn't quite fit over my shoulder. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of fiddling down here because I can't do it high up. And then I'll show you the change I make. 
All right, so I try to mold it a little bit more like my shoulder or a shoulder. Okay, so that feels better. Let's check the angle again. Is it pointing upwards? Very slightly. So here I could possibly, mm, actually, no, it's all right, but it feels mm, slightly insecure. I can change the angle here, and this is what I'm trying to decide now whether I need to do. This bit here, you can actually rotate it on this axis so that the shoulder rest does that. And I'm going to do that now. So let's just try that again. See if there's any. If it's tilting sort of slightly upwards like that, then we need to change the angle. Likewise, if it's tilting slightly downwards and not sitting quite right. So I'm going to try tilting it so that it sits better on my shoulder. So it's really hot here, by the way. Excuse me if I look sweaty. I am in tropical climate, a tropical climate. So look, I can, you can see the, uh, can you see that? Yeah, there's like a silver, uh, I'm really glad, bad at mechanical things, but like a bolt there, so we can we can twist it from there. Let's try changing the angle, and I can do that on both sides. And see if that makes a difference. So there's a lot of adjusting, and when you go and buy one in the shop, one of the benefits of buying it in the shop, I go to Turner's in Nottingham, they're great, is that they can bring you them all, and you can try them all one by one and see which one fits you something you cannot do online. You can save yourself months of buying things and probably a lot of money by going to the shop and probably paying a little bit extra just to have that level of service, which is really important. But if that's not an option for you and you don't live near a violin shop, then hopefully this video will help you. I don't have multiple shoulder wrists to show you. Now, I'm feeling pretty good. You can see that there's a good line between my shoulder um, even when I put my shoulders right back, and by back you want the shoulders blades touching to test this. I still feel like I have a pretty secure grip of my violin. Um, it's not that secure right now because I'm hot, because I'm in the tropical climate, um, but it's pretty secure. You know, if I was in a normal <laughs> climate right now, I wouldn't be worried about this whatsoever. Um, so yeah, can you play? Can you hold it with no arms? Does it sit? Parallel to the floor, um, more or less, is, you know, and, and do you feel as well? Sometimes the problem actually can be with the chain rest, and this is another video, I'm not going to talk about this here, but if you find that, that you can't get it quite right and you've got a pain in your chin, then often the chin rest is the wrong shape. You can get them at different heights as well, some of them come very flat, and you can get ones that almost seem like there's no chin rest at all and then some of them are a lot higher and you also can change the position of the chin rest. I have mine in a sort of medium position. You can either have it in the center here, which is one extreme, or you can have it right over here, clear of the, uh, what's this, the tailpiece. You don't want your chin rest to touch the tailpiece because it affects the sound. So mine is raised off of it and there's no contact between the tailpiece and the chin rest, which means it's not uh, stopping the, the tailpiece from vibrating which would change the tone. So if you get a chin rest and it's touching the tailpiece, you need to adjust it. And sometimes that means you need to move it using a micro Allen key. Now these are quite hard to get hold of and a very specialist to violinist, so you need to probably buy them online. You can't normally get them small enough in a hardware shop, but sometimes you can. I can't remember the width because I lose mine every time and I just use my fingers. <laughs> but if you can't use your fingers, you need a micro Allen key to adjust that and move it around try different places as well so that can often be the solution if you've got the height right and the violin is sitting forward then if it doesn't feel right and you feel like you're having to crick your neck then you may need to buy a different chin rest as well the majority of new violins uh, will come with a really bad well not the majority I mean factory made student cheap violins will come with a really uncomfortable chin rest and normally I tell, tell people to replace it so that's something to think about I think it is Hmm, there is one brand of student violin that always have really nice chin rests on. I don't want to say that brand here because I can't remember which one it is. Maybe Primavera, but either way I'm going to link it down here. So, I think that is enough of me talking about shoulder wrists for one day. If you have any more questions and I've missed something, feel free to ask down in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. 
have a great day and enjoy your journey to learning the violin, which we should show <laughs> Oh, actually, I have a list by the way, so sometimes I'm like, fuck up. And I just lose my words, but that's just who I am. Um, I have another thing to say. Um, now, you don't always need a shoulder rest or a chin rest. There are players who don't use either, um, more so the shoulder rest, and they play perfectly well, including my friend Rob, who is in some of my other videos. He often doesn't use a shoulder rest, so I personally do not know how to do it, so I can't teach how to play without the shoulder rest. But you can do, and it does exist, so if you've heard that and you want to explore that, then have a look elsewhere and see if you can find out how you can do that. But it's an option. <laughs>